Hello, welcome to my talk on the simplest way to derive Bernoulli's equation. As we have all know, in fluid dynamics, mathematical equations are quite complicated because of those difficult concepts as the mathematics, including the partial differentiations, the substantial derivatives, and etc. In this talk, a very simple and yet a direct method is introduced to derive Bernoulli's equation. In here, I will first introduce the assumptions for Bernoulli's equation, as well as the exceptions for different types of Bernoulli's equations. And then I will define and apply the stream tube in steady flows for the derivation. And I will introduce how the forces acting on the segment of the stream tube can be calculated in a very direct analysis. Finally, I will derive the conventional Bernoulli's equation directly from the Newton's second law of motion. You will see Using such a derivation, we can avoid the complicated mathematics, such as the partial differentiations, substantial derivatives, Euler equations, or Navier-Stokes equations. And from this derivation, we should be able to understand better how we can represent the fluid motion. Bernoulli's equation is in honor of Daniel Bruni, who initialized the fluid pressure and velocity relation in his book Hydrodynamica, which was published in 1738. Now it is known as the famous Bernoulli's principle today. Pressure decreases when the flow velocity increases. And based on the relevant record, he did study the relation with the principle of energy conservation. See in this plot. So did his father, Johann Bernoulli. However, it was Leonhard Euler who, in 1752, derived the generalized Bernoulli's equation. Given at this, as we have seen in many textbooks, here, C0 is the integral constant. Though in this specific form, the Bernoulli's equation is a conservation form of the specific energies. The energies per fruit volume, kinetic energy, the pressure potential energy, and the normal potential energy for fluids. Since in Bernoulli's equation, there is no viscous loss in the fluid, hence the energy should be conservative. Now we know Bernoulli's equation can be regarded as the most applied equation in fluid mechanics and fluid dynamics. This includes the flow in pipes, and also we can include the losses and the pumps and the turbines for more practical applications. Pitcher tubes and uh, venturi tubes for measuring the fluid velocity and uh, flow rate. This method has still been widely used. The flow past the airfoil and hydrofoil, such as the airplane, wind turbine, gas turbine, propeller, racing cars, etc. And the potential flow in which we can use the other types of Bernoulli's equation, such as the problem for wave structure interaction, air flow past the wings, spoilers, and for both incompressible and compressible flows. The most used Bernoulli's equation is under the following assumptions. The flow must be inviscid, hence there is no viscous force within the fluid. 
A direct mathematical expression is for the viscosity coefficient equaling to zero. The fluid is steady. That means the local velocity is independent of time. A mathematical equation is given by the partial differentiation of the velocity vector with regard to time. So this means the velocity vector is time independent at the fixed spatial location. For this assumption, we might have exception. If the flow is the potential, then unsteady Bernoulli's equation is possible, such as those in the wave structure interaction based on the potential flow theory. The body force acting on the fluid must be conservative. The most applied body force is the gravitational force. It is a conservative force. Since for the gravitational force, we have the expression for this specific force per unit mass. The fluid is incompressible. This is correct generally for the practical applications when the flow velocity is small. Therefore, the fluid density would be a constant. The exception for this assumption is in those very high speed flows, such as the flows past the transonic or supersonic airplanes. The compressible Bernoulli's equation must be used if the ideal gas equation can be used. For the conventional Bernoulli's equation, it is collect along the streamline of the flow. The exception for this assumption is in the potential flows, where Bernoulli's equation is satisfied in the entire flow field. In steady flows, the flow streamlines would be coincident with the flow path. See the black line here. And on the streamline, the fluid particle velocity would be tangent to the streamline everywhere. See the velocity vector v. For deriving Bernoulli's equation, a stream tube may be a better idea. A stream tube is a bond of streamlines, and all these streamlines have the same physical parameters. Therefore, on each section of the stream tube, the flow parameters would be uniform. It is acceptable when the stream tube is small or the flow is not changing very much across the section. For instance, we see these two sections, S and S plus delta S. And these two sections would be perpendicular to the stream line. The example for the stream tube might be the flow in a pipe. See this plot. In here, in the plot, we see the stream lines of this. For general applications, for each section area, A1 and A2, all physical parameters such as the velocity, pressure, density, etc. on the sections are uniform. This is why we can take the whole flow in the pipe as the stream tube. Of course, this is only possible when the pipe is not changing or bending too rapidly. Now in this slide, take a small segment data S on the stream tube, and we can analyze the physical parameters and the forces on the small segment. For illustration, we enlarge the segment as in this plot. So we can see the small stream tube segment has the angle of alpha regarding to the horizontal plane here. And the fluid parameters, pressure P, velocity V, 
and the dissection allele A. For the conventional Bernoulli's equation, the flow is assumed incompressible. Thus, the fluid density rho is a constant. So at the section S, the section area is A, the pressure is P, velocity V, and at the section S plus delta S, the section area becomes A plus delta A. Pressure is P plus delta P, and the velocity is V plus delta V. And if we consider the force acting on the segment, here for Bernoulli's equation, the viscous force is not included. So we can see at the segment sections S and S plus delta S, we can see the force due to the pressure P and the P plus delta P. And on the surface of the segment, due to the average pressure P plus half delta P. And the body force due to the gravitational force of the segment delta W, which is pointing down vertically. Now, in the next two slides, the forces acting on the segment will be studied since the fluid segment will move around the stream line, so all the forces we calculated in the next two slides would be around the stream line direction. The first force acting on the fluid segment is the body force of the flow, the gravitational force delta W acting on the segment. And the component around the stream line, delta F1, is given by this from the plot here. And the minus sign here is because delta F1 is in the opposite position with the stream line. So consider the gravitational force. It is given by this G delta M and the delta M is the mass of the segment, calculated as rho times the average section area at the middle of the segment, times the length of the segment. Therefore, the force delta F1 is given as this. Now we notice here, delta S times sine alpha is actually the increment of Z. This is because the gravitational force is always opposite in that direction. So we can write the force delta F1 as this. And if we drop the higher order term in the expression, we have the expression for the body force acting on the stream line direction given as this. Here, in this slide, we will calculate the forces due to the pressure on the segment. The first part of the pressure force is the pressure acting on the sections of the segment. Here, P and P plus delta P. Because of the pressure are on the stream line, so the force acting on the two sections would be given delta F2 given by this P times A minus P plus delta P times A plus delta A. So we can obtain the expression as this easily by dropping the higher order term for the force. The pressure is also acting on the surface of the segment. See this this part of the force is delta F3. It is calculated as this. Here, delta S is the length of the segment. Delta C is the tangential increment here. And uh, sine beta is for this component 
parallel to the fluid stream line, this line. Consider the relation given by this. Here, delta R is the element in the radial direction for the delta A. Therefore, we can have the expression as this and uh, take the constant p plus half delta p out of the summation and we have this and this part would be actually the area of the ring here delta a and by dropping the higher order term we have the expression for delta f3 given by this so in here we can see the surface force due to the pressure is quite complicated. We can imagine if the fluid with cause force is included, it would be very complicated or even impossible if the viscous cause force must be analyzed in three-dimensional flows. One tricky thing here is for a steady flow for the Bernoulli's equation. Since here we are talking about a steady flow for Bernoulli's equation, thus it seems the system should be time independent. In fact, a steady flow is only referring to the flow past the fixed location such as A0 here. It is fixed in the space. When the flow passes this section, all the flow parameters would be time independent. But the fluid particle or the segment itself could move around the streamline in the steady flow. The movement could change the direction and the magnitude. Thus, the fluid particle itself is dynamic in this regard in the Lagrangian representation. So, in summary, in a steady flow, the fluid local acceleration is zero, but the substantial acceleration, that is, the normal acceleration, might not be zero. You can see my video. Understanding the Lagrangian and the Eulerian representations for fluid motion. So we can see for the steady flow, the local acceleration given by the partial differentiation of the velocity vector with regard to time is zero. But the normal acceleration, the normal differentiation of the velocity vector with regard to time might not be zero. This normal acceleration is also called the substantial acceleration in many textbooks. In this regard, in a steady flow along the stream line, the motion of the fluid segment is governed by the Newton's second law of motion given by this. The mass of the segment times the acceleration of the segment is the total force acting on the segment delta F1 plus delta F2 plus delta F3. All these three forces we have obtained in the previous two slides. Here, we substitute the forces into the dynamic equation and uh, we have the expression as this. Obviously, these two terms would uh, cancel each other. So we have the equation as this. And here, we rewrite the term from this. Now, we consider a very short segment so that ds would be equal to delta s dz equals to delta z and also the ratio is actually the differentiation of the ds with regard to dt so it is the velocity of the segment v and the dp equaling to delta p 
such that we can obtain the equation as this. This is a very useful equation. If the fluid density rho and the gravitational acceleration g are constant, then this equation is integrable. And the integral form of the equation is given as this. This is the conventional Bernoulli's equation in steady flow along the streamline, such as the steady flow in the pipes. Here, C0 is the integral constant. This Bernoulli's equation means the sum of the terms. This, this, and this would be a constant along the streamline.